New York, we are from. Hi, welcome Denver to Channel 7 News. Here we are this evening. I'm Bill Hatchensworth, and this is my partner. Felipe Verides. Felipe Verides. We're here to bring you the evening news. <laughs> so tonight, um, we're opening up with the controversial new movie called Lysteria Hysteria. Critics are upset because of potential misleading information huh. about a serious bacterial infection. You don't say, Felipe. I you say don't it. say. I said it. Hmm. All right, well, uh, what do you say, Denver? Should we take a look at this, uh, this controversial preview? Here we go. Let's take a look. Detective Longsnout here. I'm here to investigate on some reported murders that have come down. Can I come in? Oh, oh my back. Oh, oh no. Not my cat. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, jeez. <laughs> Mm, I can't wait. Oh, yeah. out here at the scene of the crime. I'm looking for any sort of clue. I've got two dead bodies in a reported 24-hour period. What is this? Oh, it stings the nostrils. Oh, man, that's gross. Oh. But I feel alive. I feel alive. Detective Longsnout here still. I'm at the second crime scene. Looking for any sort of clue. Doesn't seem to be any. What's this? What's this? Mm. Note. Uh, unpasteurized milk. Ooh, that's not sit well. Ugh. Ugh. That's not right. That's not right.
shocking and sensationalized. More like honest and enlightening, a true representation of the monster that plagues humanity. The real monster is misinformation, something that you are an expert on. Hmm. Well, regardless of what you believe, here to comment is bacteriologist and my cousin, Professor Wormberg. Professor Wormberg, welcome to the show. Please tell us your thoughts. Professor Wormberg? Hey guys, Professor Wormberg here. Woo! Welcome to my mad scientist lab. Here we are. We're going to talk about this bacteria today. It's called Listeria montacytogenes. You know, I'm not that great with pronunciations, but commonly it's referred to as Listeriosis. Anyways, let's get into it. It's a gram-positive, non-spore-forming, motile, room temperature, rod shape, approximately 0.5 micrometers by 0.5 micrometers. That is huge! Or really tiny. It's really tiny. Anyways, let's talk about its virulence factors here. Uh, first and foremost, it possesses internal and A and B proteins on the surface of the bacteria that it uses to adhere to the host cell membrane via this uh, C adherin. Um, once inside, it gets phagocytosed into the cell membrane vacuole, which the cell uses to suck in the bacteria. Um, once inside, it quickly releases this Lysero lysin O, or LLO, and it dissolves the cell membrane, releasing the bacteria into the cytoplasm of the cell. From here, it uses uh, this actin assembly protein to polymerize uh, this polarized filament from within the cell, which it uses to shoot off towards the cell membrane. It gives it motility until it hits the membrane and it stretches it out. It stretches it out to the next cell, where the next cell engulfs that and starts the process all over again. It's wild, it's crazy, it's science! What a hack. Whoa, whoa! Let's run in the family. Whoa, Professor Wormberg is a bit of a theatrical nut, but he is credible. Can we please get a credible source on this matter? Let me do your bidding. We actually have a medical professional in the building. Let's send it to Dr. Beardface on the matter. It's Beard Fosse. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, Great to be on the show with you guys today. I really appreciate you having me. Um, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Dr. Beardface, uh, Dr. Kenneth Beardface. You can call me Ken or Beardface, whatever floats your boat. Anyways, um, I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about um, listeriosis and where it comes from. So we have a listeria monocytogenes. Is, uh, for the record, that's the correct pronunciation. I know some people have been saying it wrong. Um, throughout the duration of this program. Um, but that's aside from the points. Now that we know how it's pronounced, um, let's kind of jump right into it. So Listeria monocytogenes, um, once it gets into the body through consumption of tainted food, um, it kind of makes its way down into the, in the intestine and where it'll kind of start to invade and proliferate. Um, if gone untreated, it can cause severe sepsis and uh, men meningitis as it can uh, broach the blood-brain barrier. Um, also for pregnant women, if, if it goes untreated, um, it can result in fetal death and stillborn infant. Um, so huge, huge problem here. A um, little bit of history. Um, it, the first epidemic was back in 1949 in Germany. There was 85 infant deaths. Um, and at the time they didn't know that it was a foodborne illness. They realized that there was some bacteria present in all of these um, stillborns and after a little bit of research they realized that it was a bacteria they had never seen before so they named it Listeria monocytogenes. Um, so where do we find this? Uh, it's found in soil, it's found in vegetation. Uh, from there animals pick it up through what they're eating. Um, it's a very, very durable bacteria, can survive in harsh conditions, low temperatures, high temperatures, um, with or without oxygen. Um, so it's, it's everywhere, it's ubiquitous. They've just recently found out that it's in 5-10% to 10 of human um, guts. 5-10% to 10 of us have it um, already. So um, 
just be careful. Um, the, the only way that you can get listeriosis is through direct consumption or ingestion of uh, tainted food or um, what liquids can have it as well. Um, so how do you know if you contract listeriosis? Well, uh, for those normal, um, you know, healthy adults, they probably won't experience anything. If they do, it might be as mild as a little gastroenteritis um, that'll last a day or two usually as a stomach flu, but if you are elderly, immunocompromised, or you are pregnant, you must be vigilant and watch out and adhere to food safety guidelines because it can be very dangerous to you and we as humans need to take care of each other. So what will you see if you are one of the at-risk populations? You will see severe fever, muscle aches, stiff neck, severe headache, stomach ache, vomiting, nausea, diarrhea, um, and that's for the elderly and immunocompromised. As for pregnant women, you will experience nothing but, a, but mild fever-like symptoms, and usually it doesn't affect the mother. Um, the bacteria will just travel down into the placenta where it'll infect the newborn, and usually it results in death. So um, pregnant women, be careful out there with what you're eating. Um, so if you get it, what do you do? come to the hospital immediately. See me, Dr. Beerface, I'll be glad to see you. Um, we're gonna treat you with some IV ampicillin and IV gentamicin. Um, the synergistic effects of those really are able to penetrate into the host cell and disrupt the uh, bacterial membrane from forming and just cease bacterial proliferation. So um, just come see us and we'll be glad, uh, glad to help you guys out. Um, but some guidelines for avoiding it. Um, just don't eat smoked seafood. Be careful when you're eating cured meats to adhere to all safe food safety guidelines. Um, be careful when you eat sprouts. Make sure they're washed and cleaned and come from a good source. Um, if you're eating melons of any sort, cut them, eat them right away, or refrigerate them properly. Otherwise, it can uh, become a big mess quick. So. Anyways, um, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, great to be on the show, guys, and I will see you later. Dr. Beardface out.